job today. We've got a copper hot water cylinder, as you can see. And what we're going to do is take this blank out and we're going to install a new immersion heater in its place. So what we do need to do, it's a gravity fed system. So what we need to do is to drain the water down below this level. In order for us to do that, this is the main stopcock that feeds the bottom of the cylinder from the header tank above. Um, we would normally be able just to turn that off. That's a gate valve. They are known for seizing. Um, often they are turned fully clock, fully anti-clockwise and, and then and they seize up. Um, so we can't use that. So what we're going to have to do is go up into the loft to the header tank and the ball cock. We're going to just tie it up with a piece of wire just to hold it up. To, and, and then what we're going to do is just turn the hot water taps on and that will eventually take a few minutes and that will drain the water down. So what we've done, we've placed a piece of inch by inch um, wood across the um, across the tank and then we're just with a piece of wire we've just tied that up to there so now the ball cock is in the up position and basically there's a little valve inside this um, piece here and so that's now closed the um, closed the, the valve so no no water no cold water is going to come in so what that basically means is when we turn the when we turn the taps on the level in here will go down but it won't start filling up so this is the cap now that we need to remove. You can see it's got a few little sort of um, hammer marks or chisel marks around the outside. What Dad has done, we've tried to undo it and it's just completely seized up. And so just with a hammer and chisel, he's just cold knocked chisel. it with a little cold chisel. He's just been knocking it, just giving little, little, little shocks. And amazingly, after a couple of minutes, after about sort of 50 or 60 taps, it has then just suddenly twisted. No, then, turned. Or turned. Not twisted, Matthew. And now we can just simply get the big wrenches on and now it will turn and undo and then we've got access to it. Yeah. So Perfect. We have the immersion heater and we've got this tool here. So my granddad made this for dad when he was younger and it's specifically for the immersion heaters and in particular put this piece in as well so you can put it over when in case there's a cable in the way or something like that and it just grips back on there and then to give you extra leverage that can just go on like that So we've got the top of the immersion heater. We've just fitted um, the, the clamp. cable clamp. And, and then we've got the, well, let's just go through all the different parts. So we've got the thermostat. So that is the, the, um, the, the switch that, that senses the temperature of the water. That slides in like so. We've got this bar hang on, here. Hang on, hang on. This is the okay. this is the, the overheat cutout. If it gets okay. too hot, so we've got this. That's the overheat cutout. You can you can explain it. Yeah, that's that goes in series between the element and the thermostat. Okay. So, so we we're, we're, we're going to put that into the this this is like the live under the, the live connection onto the element, if you like. Let's get the. And then it goes into one side of the thermostat. Doesn't matter which way round it goes. And then the supply yeah, then, then the supply goes on, but we'll connect, connect that after it's fitted into the tank. The tank. Yeah. But and then that's the neutral connection. No, no. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a neutral connection. That's yes, the neutral mate. connection. And that's then this one here, that's the earth. The earth. Yeah. And so that's important to get a good yeah. earth connection. First of all, that brass washer should go on. Normally people would put this, this cupped washer on okay. and they put it on that way up. But I say it should go on upside down so that when you're tightening it up, 
the cup of the wash the cup part of the washer isn't in the way of the nut. I see. I'll, I'll I see. explain uh, that uh, when we tighten yeah. it up. I see that, yeah. And then we put the locking washer on, and then the nut. Okay. And we only put the nut halfway down, and, and so that it's all ready to do the connection when when we get it into the tank. Okay. Okay, Matthew. Put some sealer around the flange and the threads. The thing is, if you get it nice, if you put this stuff on, you don't need to tighten immersion heaters up like people do tighten them. I've taken immersion heaters out that I fitted more than 20 years ago, and I'm just able to undo them without having to try and loosen them off like we was having to do with that, with that um, cap Get, earlier getting on. out earlier. Um, you can, you, I, as far as I'm concerned, you can just tighten them down a little more than finger tight. And then the and, seal goes. And then, and then we've got the washer, or whatever you call it, a gasket washer or whatever. And we put a little bit of sealer on both sides of that. Put a bit more on the other side. So I like to get this all completely ready to put straight into the tank. I have had problems in the past when you take the old immersion here, or like the old cap off of there, and you, you for whatever reason, because of because things are leaking, you, you sometimes you can't get the water completely turned off, and sometimes I've had to whip out the old immersion eater and put the new one in quick <laughs> <laughs> without spilling too much water. <laughs> we just, we've got a towel here, so there, there's there's still a, a small amount of water um, sort of within this pipe and just at this level around here. And so probably maybe half a litre of water. And so we've got a towel here and we're just undoing the, um, the okay. this, this cap and the water is just gradually seeping out and we're just soaking it up in the towel just so it's, it's not making a mess. And it's still, it's still coming out. I don't know if you can see it, but there's sort of water here, but the towel is, this is definitely soaking it up. Let's try and do it a bit more. There's also bits of the old gasket that's, that's coming off, so we want to make we don't we want to be careful to not get that, yeah, we don't get that inside the. We don't want any of that gasket to be in the to fall into the water. So just always be mindful of of that. And now that looks like. And you can see that's beginning to drain out a bit more now. So we're, get, we're now getting the immersion heaters ready to put in there. The surface of the is all nice and clean. So that's going to go straight in there. And it's not quite square. Then there you go. You have to be careful, don't get me cross threaded. If you turn it backwards until it clicks, uh, it's still not. Uh, can't get it. These are some of the problems that you have. Yeah. It looks like it's the problem is because it's such a long element, it's quite hard just to. There you go. I think that's gone in. I think that's got it. So I don't know if you notice there, but just by turning it in an anti-clockwise direction, you feel it clicking to the beginning of the thread. You feel the threads just suddenly, just suddenly click in. Yeah. And there you have it, and that's it. It's not tightened up yet, but it is in. There's a little bit of water on the floor, but only a small amount. And then there's the tool. How many edges is that? Is that this eight? Eight. That's an octopus. Yeah. Look at that. It's catching that plastic bit. Right, 
that should be all right. That should okay. be more than tight enough now. But okay. see. So, so, so if you if you want to say that we gently tighten down the immersion heater. Yep, well, they can hear you. So we've we've, we've we've tightened up the immersion heater. Um, as you can see, it wasn't done hugely tight, but it's certainly tight enough to prevent any water coming out. If there is any any water, um, leaking. any leaking, we can still simply okay. just tighten up a little bit more, but okay. they don't need to be wrenched hugely we tight. It. We should check it after the header tank is full in the roof, Matthew. Yeah. Because yeah. that's when there'll be the pressure on it. Yeah, so what we'll do now, we'll go up into the loft and I'll um, we'll take off the... Um, the, the the ball cock, and then we're um, we'll release the ball cock. Yeah, we'll release the ball cock. You can see that now. The ball cock's working. Well, it's all filling up with water now, so the pressure slightly increases, and now it's still dripping slightly. So we will just tighten it up a little bit more. I'll give it. I'm going to. Yeah, yeah. I still don't like doing too tight that time. I don't know why that's why it's leaking actually. I never have to do them normally tight like that. I've just dried it all off and it all seems to be okay. I'm just going to run some tissue around the edge and leave it for a few minutes and that will that will tell us whether or not it's, um, it, it, it's leaking or not. So a couple of minutes have passed. Let's just remove the tissue. You can still see a little bit of the um, the paste on there, the sealant, but it doesn't seem to be wet. So I think that should be okay. Just give it a, a clean. Thermostat up slightly. So the earth is on there. That's really nice and tight. The reason why the earth is done first is as it as you tighten as you tighten the nut up. The cable begins to twist round. Round the round round the post. Round the, uh, yeah, round, round 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 this post, round this thread. Yes. And so, by doing the earth first, as it twists round, you can actually just loop the whole thing round. If you was to do either the line or neutral first, they would then become twisted when the earth is done. So, by doing the, the or the CPC first, um, we either can untwist it completely and then just do the line and the neutral. That's just putting the little clamp in. And that just secures the cable. We haven't spoke about the cable yet. What size is the cable? It's a one, one, one and a half mil. One and a half millimeter cable, but it's a special heat, um, resistant. heat resistant cable. Okay, so that just goes in. It only needs to be one and a half millimetres. Yeah, because that's right, about 20 amps or more anyway, yeah. isn't it? Right, now, so we've got to put the live into the live, connect, live connection of the thermostat. Otherwise known as the line. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, okay. <laughs> to me, it's always been the live. But there you go. Twisted up and doubled back, and then that just goes into the other side of the thermostat. All the thermostat is is just a mechanical switch, but it just operates automatically um, by the use of a bimetallic strip inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all like this. It's a whole, it's a whole strip somehow down the inside of the thermostat. Yeah. I don't know exactly how it does it, but, it does but it. we know we know mate, basically what the idea is with the bimetallic, with the bimetallic strip.
Right. Okay. And now there you have thing, it. Now the thing is, now when we check it with that ammeter, it's going to be live. Is that going to be a problem? That'll be okay. We have temporarily rigged the immersion heater up to a 13 amp socket. Okay. The reason we've done that is because, well, to test it, because the time switch is on an off-peak Economy 7 supply, so it's not live at the moment. So we've just done this, and now we've. And what you can see there, a I've got meter. a clamp meter over the neutral yep. conductor there, um, and it's drawing just over 13 amps, 13.2 amps. It's a three kilowatt immersion heater, so that's what we would expect to see. So there you have it, the immersion heater has been installed.